New buildings for ancient ships don't always have the easiest ride. Last year, the visitor centre for Greenwich's Cutty Sark got voted the ugliest building of the year and won the Carbuncle Cup. It was described as putting the ship in a throttle and defiling the very thing it set out to preserve. Lurking behind me, looking like a cross between a UFO and a luxury yacht, is the new £35 million home for the Mary Rose Museum. It's described as England's answer to Pompeii and contains thousands of artefacts from Tudor times. Let's see if its architects have fared any better. So Chris, could you tell us a bit about the form of the building and where the original idea came from? Well, the geometry of the building really relates to the Mary Rose itself, the shape of it. It's actually a toroidal geometry. It's trying to create a minimum enclosure, if you like, around the ship itself. But it also relates to the um, dry dock which it's sitting in, mm. which is a scheduled ancient monument. And have you mimicked any of the same shipbuilding techniques in the construction of this shell? Yes, well, the cladding of the building it was a challenge in its own right to find the right materials. I felt that timber was appropriate, partly because of the shipbuilding idea. The building sited right in the centre of Portsmouth's historic dockyard, which is still a functioning Royal Navy base. It's a very surreal context to be working in, because we have the 18th century warship of the HMS Victory behind me the Georgian buildings of the old naval base, which is still functioning, and then things like the Spinnaker Tower in the background, which bring illusions of um, Dubai's Burj Al Arab Hotel. Being a boat-like building, it's interesting to compare the Mary Rose Museum with the HMS Victory, where you literally have this dramatic entrance broadside up the gangplank. With the Mary Rose, instead, they built this kind of porter cabin entrance on the front, which disguises the boat-like form of the building and makes the entrance slightly underwhelming. Let's see what it's like inside. So Chris, can you tell us a bit about how you arranged the interior spaces around such a precious um, object? Well, the hull of the Mary Rose uh, has been here for 30 years and it hasn't moved. Mm. Uh, so the museum was built around her and she is the sort of heart of the museum. And what we did is, uh, what you see here is the, is the starboard side. Uh, but because we had all these objects, uh, we'd have loved to put them back in position on the original hull, but it can't take any weight. So we rebuilt uh, the missing port side uh, in a simplified manner, but the same shape and, sp and spatial arrangement and the same deck levels as the original hull, and put back in her all those objects that would have been on the starboard side. Right. Uh, and put back in a way they would have been just before she capsized on, on the 19th of July, 1545. Obviously there are, are some important pieces to show uh, and the guns uh, were part of that uh, selection. But it's also the, all the personal objects that uh, would belong to individuals. But she was a fighting ship and she had uh, weaponry from the longbow and all the arrows uh, to the latest uh, guns, and this is probably one of the finest uh, guns in the collection. Koshi, this is such a fine object, whereas although we've got the original gun carriage for this gun, it would have, if we'd put it on the original car carriage, uh, she, it would have had to be protected. Uh, so we built this uh, acrylic copy, which is probably the only acrylic gun carriage in the world. And, but you, it is so special because you can start to understand how the gun carriage was constructed. So Chris, there are all these strange kind of hieroglyphic markings dotted around the, the hull of your building. What are they about? Well, it was part of the mystery of the architecture, if you like, to have some intriguing references as to what's going on inside the building. And, and these are the typical graffiti which were used by the sailors as a sort of tag to, because most of them were illiterate, they couldn't write. Mm. They had their own mark, which they would place on all their possessions. And you see that on the, particularly on the uh, wooden um, plates and, and, and cups inside. But all their boxes and possessions have their own tag on them. I thought it would be rather intriguing to place them on the outside of the building. So, Chris, I mean, a lot of architects are interested in, in boats and the kind of ref nautical references, but do you have a particular personal interest in this project? Yes, I do. I think uh, I'm, I'm a marine archaeologist as well as an architect. And, uh, you know, obviously, this, is, uh, this project is 
effectively the outcome of an extraordinary archaeological excavation that was carried out in the 70s. Um, and to me associated with it has been uh, an extraordinary, um, very special adventure.